Well, um, as I said, uh, we are in the book of Psalms again, the 13th chapter. And uh, on Wednesday night, we were, not Wednesday, Tuesday night, we were, not Tuesday, Thursday night, we were in Urban Cat 1, book 1, celebrating uh, David's Psalm 51. They're doing a big project now uh, in, that, in that whole chapter that David writes, uh, 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 chapter 51. And I said, any day now, we're going to be studying 51, but today, we're on 13. So we should be there any, any second now. But in chapter 13, uh, David writes, it's almost another lament song. And he starts out today saying, how long? How, anybody ever ask God, how long? <laughs> Lord, how long is it going to be? How long is this going to go on? Well, let's just read what David said. He says, how long? Will you forgive me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with this? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? And some of your translations may be, how, how long must I bear pain in my soul? And the soul is that that intellectual, emotional place. That all of your, most of our strength comes from that soul condition. That place where we're always overthinking. And then our thoughts lead us to emotional places of fear and doubt and, 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 uh, and almost, uh, almost uh, uh, neglect. And, and here he's saying, my, he, he says in the NIV, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemies triumph over me? You know, it feels like all the people that hate me is like the haters. No, the haters, thank you, though. Thank you, because you know I'm special. <laughs> thank you, Pastor. But today I'm right. Okay. Yeah, this is not working as we want. But, uh, but uh, how long are my haters going to look like? Remember that? How long are they going to look like they are winning? You know, that's the question here. And he says, look on me and answer. He is, he is yelling. Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. He says, I'm about to die. What I'm going through, I feel like I'm about to die. That's what he's saying again. And, and, uh, and, and I want to move over to the book of Numbers, because Numbers is almost this identical, what he's written today. Uh, in, in, we went through the whole Bible. We're now just getting to, you know, we came in this place, uh, 2009, uh, uh, Easter of 2009, and we start going through the Bible. We start going through Genesis, and, and, and now we are in 2019, in our 10th year, and here we, amen, here we are in the, the 13th chapter, but we went through numbers already. We went, through, we went through Genesis. Genesis was God picking his, his special people. It wasn't us. God chose the Jews. He chose a group of Jews that, that he called his special people. And then in Exodus, he redeemed them. How did he redeem them? He brought them out of slavery. How? How did he get out of slavery? Through the Red Sea. And they got through that Red Sea, and he brought them to the Promised Land, which is right there to the left, two days later. Right? He didn't do that. Why did he take 40 years when he can make a left and get there in three, three days at the most? Because they weren't in slavery. Slavery was in them. See, most times you aren't in sin. Sin is in you. And, and that's the thing we got to get our mind on. Like, I don't have to stop doing this. What you're doing out here is not the problem. 
It's what's going on in here. It's this mind of yours. This is the problem. And we keep saying, I can't stop drinking. I can't stop this. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying, people say, Pastor, is drinking a sin? I ain't say that. I, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Can't stop chopping buying shoes. Can't stop eating. That's it. Look, so whatever is killing you or stopping you from following God's purpose is your sin. Amen? The thing that's taking you off track is your sin. I don't like it. People stop me on the way to sip and chat and say, Pastor, is it a sin to wear orange on Tuesday? You know, it, it's, the, it's like everybody wants to know, give me just give me the simple answer so I can just stop that and go to heaven. But heaven is not about you doing something. Heaven is about you being something. And see, some, some of y'all can't stop doing something, but you've already become what God called you to become. But now he wants you to follow him. And when you follow him, get your mind. He said, let this mind, am I wrong? I'm making this up. Let this mind that's in Christ Jesus be in you. And with the mind of Christ in you, you can follow the purpose of Christ. Amen? Without fear and question. But God brought them through the Red Sea and made a big old fat right. And, and, and then, uh, I love this, uh, Leviticus. Leviticus, he also, he makes them his own. He comes and lives amongst them. Now, members is the hardest book to read. I guarantee you, if you can't sleep that night, pop open numbers. <laughs> it will send you into a sleep that you'll be slow. You'll wake up so much slobber running over numbers. Because that's a good sleep. Numbers will knock you out. You gotta read numbers in the middle of the day after you wake up. Because it's it's a hard book. One through thirty, one through twelve is so hard to read. Because that's what God is doing. They read, they come through that bread seed and they make them right. It takes them two months to get to the bottom of the Sinai Desert. Two months. They are walking on all kinds of, uh, 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 of topography. The grounds are, are crazy, and you're taking 2.5 million, some theologians say, 2.5 million people came to that Red Sea on dry ground. Isn't that crazy? 2.5 million. Some people were living, some people was running, some people was pushing, trying to get through, because you see walls of water on each side. I'm not walking. I can't swim. I'm out of there. I'm going to run. They walk through on dry ground, and then coming behind them is who is it? Pharaoh and his army and his chariots. How many? They said 600 brand new chariots, and then the other ones. So the Bible doesn't even count. There's endless number of chariots coming. They just hear the run running like, and, and, and God opens the sea. And you come running through, and here comes all the brand new chariots. And God let the last one come over. And that sea tumbled down and destroyed the enemy. But sometimes the enemy is not destroyed. Sometimes the enemy is destroyed right on the heat. That means if you don't have faith enough to believe God, you won't be where the enemy is. And you'll never leave. And here, here, God redeems them. He sets them free. He, he comes among them. And then they get to the bottom of the Sinai Desert. And then they organize. You remember when I had the overhead projector showing you how he organized? He organized the, the, the tabernacle in the center of them. And then uh, there's three tribes on the north, three tribes on the south, three tribes on the east, three tribes on the west. And, and in the center, if you would take an old ground bird's eye view, a cross with God in the center was crossing the desert. 2.5 million people. They all walking. And they knew their position and they knew what their job was. That's the sermon right there. Knowing your position, that's how church works too. Knowing your position and knowing what your role is. And if you know that, oh my God, the things and places you could, you could go. But then, so by the 13th 
13 chapters, something happens. 13 chapter and 14 chapter is Pastor uh, Greg and Minister Lydia's front favorite chapters. Because both of their sons are getting out of these two chapters. And so he, 13 chapter, uh, uh, Moses says, God tells Moses, pick leaders out of all the tribes, one out of each tribe. And I want them to go and take a look at the land we're going to go up and take. Just do, a, just do a check. Look at it. And they took 40 days to walk up and get there. And they looked and they checked it out and they came back with a pessimistic outlook. They came back and said, oh no we won't. <laughs> we looked at the people and we looked like grasshoppers compared to them. They are huge. Oh my God, the ground, everything they have is so huge. We got some grapes. Look at these grapes. Even we have the valley, oh, the grapes are so big. Everything is, and we look like, not they, not, not we look like to them. We look like grasshoppers to ourselves. Isn't that something? I just wanna, I just want us to look at this because because we we are so busy looking and looking and looking that we forget who our God is. And here they are. They have completely, they have completely said we are not able to do this because it's too much. The people are too big. The land, I mean, the, they'll, they would destroy us in battle. They would destroy us in battle. And but two knuckleheads, Caleb, and what's the other name? Joshua. Caleb and Joshua came back with different reward. And, and I, I just want to, I just want to read something that they came back after all that they had seen. These people came through the Red Sea. And still, they've never been hungry a day in their life. God has provided everything they needed. And still, they don't think God is big enough. So, so I, I love it. It's that we can't even look back over the blessings of our life. And, and because you know God has done some good things to us, right? It, how many miracles and testimonies do we have? We got so many testimonies of what God has done. But when the next day comes, we're like, this. like God never, ever did it. And here, I want to read this. But they have three big problems. I want to tell you what one of their problems was. Somebody go to chapter 11. Unknown words. Go to chapter, keep the thumb in Psalms. But go to chapter 11 in the words. And read the first four words. Now the people complain about the first four words. Now the people what? Now the people complain. What are some of the reasons we complain? Sometimes we don't have enough. Sometimes we, sometimes what we got is the wrong side. Sometimes what we got is just, we just tired of it. You ever had something say, that again? Don't you know there's some people saying, oh, I wish I had anything. And we look at ourselves and say, that again. Look what they were dealt about. Okay, somebody go to 18. Start reading 18. Who has 18? 11, 18. Three hundred and ninety slaves. 
and not one of them died. She, in the Underground Railroad, she freed about 300, I think it's 390. And she said, not one died. But she said, you know why? Because some of them, the ones that didn't bring, are the ones that didn't know they were slaves. Some people are in some mess and don't even know. That they were in slavery and they said, we ate some fish at no cost. But your whole life is gone. You don't have a life. Some of us are living now in circumstances that are beneath the level that God called us to live. And yet, we don't even know it. And every day, we keep going, we keep going, we keep going, not even knowing God's got something better for you. Yeah. But he's waiting for you to acknowledge, I'm in slavery. You know, there are people who don't even pray for deliverance because they don't know they're lost. Yeah. They don't know they're stuck because they're so used to it. You know, Mr. Smith been good to us. Mrs. Smith give us a ham every Christmas. He breaks off the fatty part and it's so good. The reason pigs feed so good because that's all we got palate for. That's the worst part of pig. And that's what is delicious. I know it's at our table every Thanksgiving and my daddy barbecues it. He got, we got regular pig feet, barbecue pig feet. We got, we got steam chitterlings, barbecue chitterlings. But guess why we have a power? Because that's what was thrown to us. We said used to eating at the table with the dogs. That it becomes mm, delicious. We have been lost for so long that I'm so used to it. What are you talking about? What? And here they said, we remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Take me back to slavery. I don't want to be free. I want to go back where the fish was free. And that's a, and that's a thing I'm free. God has killed their enemies and brought them out, liberated them. And they are dreaming about the days when they cried out to the Lord. The only reason they're there is because God heard them cry. They heard their cries, Lord, deliver us. And after 400 and some years of slavery, God finally heard them cry. And he sent Moses to deliver my people. Tell Pharaoh what? Let my people go. Yeah. And he did. But they got out of sin. See, what you don't realize is that you hate sin, but you don't know how used to sin you are. You hate the bad part of sin. You hate losing your family and losing your losing your house. You hate you hate that your marriage broke up, but you don't you don't the, the, the name of the hotel is that. See, the, the good part is always the bad part. But we think, but we're so addicted to the good part that we keep repeating it. We hate the results, but we love. Repeating what caused the consequences. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that something? And the only thing that can change us. Anybody got an answer? Jesus. But we gotta go to him and we gotta know where we are. We gotta admit that. We gotta admit it. And here, look at that. I, I love go, go to 33. Go to 33. Oh, 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 no, 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 not yet. Finish reading 18. You can finish. Somebody finish reading 18. Because there's some good stuff here. Look what God says. Now, what have they been, eat? been eating up to now? The, the man, God created, they, were, they said, we're hungry. And God created this dew. When the dew dropped and when it dried over, it was like a little flaky cake. And every day God provided it to them. And they were eating the first day they got it. Oh, this is amazing. But we get tired of it, don't we? And they got tired of the land. And 
they, and God heard, we don't like your provision. God heard it. Look what God said. Read it. For a better off in <coughs> Now the Lord will give you meat and you will eat it. You will not eat it for just one day or two days or five, ten or twenty days, but for a whole month until it comes out your nostrils and you blow it.
God still led them. They still ate. Their shoes didn't wear out. We ran. They had, they had, when they went to the temple, they kept walking and they crossed. They were on the east and the south and walking and walking and wandering and walking. <laughs> They're walking, oh, are we south, east, west? No, okay, two, two steps up. There you go, now let's go. First Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday, fourth Sunday. Church as usual, and you're still in the same. Still in the same place, and God wants to do miracles. He wants to work miracles, but you too stubborn, you too self-righteous, and you still go to church. You still got yourself together. You still following God. They still believe God. I'm not saying they died and went to hell. They just died without purpose. We want God's stuff. But we don't want to walk in his will. Amen. We pray for God to bless us, but he's saying, what about me? He's saying, what about me? Does anybody care about me? And I, I love, I love, look, look what, what, uh, uh, look what, uh, go back to 13 Psalms, go back to 13 Psalms, look what David says. David, David was concerned about God's reputation. He was concerned about God's reputation. He, were, he was concerned about what people said about God. Not him. See, we just worry about ourselves. We worry about ourselves, what people say about us, how we look, how we, how we look, what people think about us. What, you know, that's why a lot of people won't come here because they, we're in a school. I want to go to an established church. Please run home. Please, because we ain't no established church kind of people. We are the people who want to follow the purpose of God. It's so important. Listen, if some of you want to have what's that? I want to get my wedding here. I want to have my funeral here. I'm, a, I'm going to another church, but they got a they got a baby. I like their baptism too. Church as usual. This, this is the people. Church as usual. They're in church. They're doing all of the things that you're supposed to do. They are following all the, all of the, uh, the, the thing, all of the things of the church. They are following them. They've been baptized some twice, some three times, and they are they are taking communion every week. It's first Sunday. It's first Sunday, Pastor. We're supposed to have communion. I'm sorry, darling. We got to go back. Well, let's have, we gotta have it first Sunday. Oh, order. Order! Got your communion. What else you want, baby? What up? Let's make you happy. What you want? We got it all. But are you delivered? Oh, what? what about how many more years before you die so the next generation can come in, lay hands on people? Say, and people say, I'm free because of you. I'm here because of the church. I came here because of Phyllis. I came here because of Kelly. I, my life shines so people will come follow me. And that, that's what it's got to be. And look, I want to read this. I've got to read this. Look, go back to David. David David says here, Lord, your repetition. He says, and my enemies, Lord, if I die, my enemies will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. And you know why he said that's important? Because they know who I'm following. There was no doubt in their mind who David's God was. There was no doubt in that they knew me. He said, I'm concerned about your reputation, God. And look what David, look what David, let's go read 14. Now let's go back to Numbers. I want to read a lot now. Uh, Pastor Sean, can you read 14? Go to, go to uh, 14. Yes. And I'm sorry. No, go back to 11. Go back to 13. And then uh, let's go to uh, I'm lost where I am. 14. Oh, 13. Read, just read 13. Check the from the beginning.
So you know the, the who went? Who went? He sent leaders. Okay? These are the leaders. These are the leaders of the church. Keep reading. Keep reading.
to do for me. And there's a few things that God asks us to do. He asks us, A, to, uh, he said, drop those Ten Commandments. Remember he said that? Drop those Ten Commandments. I'm going to give you two. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your might, all your mind. He can give you love him with everything you have. And then, love your neighbor as yourself. Don't that seem kind of simple? Don't that seem kind of weird? But guess what? When you have wealthy people in this world that has the wealth of a million people, a mil millions of people can live in a two-room house and have the money one billion dollars. Do you think God's going to judge us for that? That the world is so homeless, but yet we have nothing for them. I'm looking at poor Haiti. They're losing it. And if you take if you take a man's food away, and he can't feed his children, and he and yet but yet he sees wealth in the land, but not on his table, that makes somebody lose their mind. And we look and judge people, but guess what? You've been so blessed. We are so blessed in America. And here, God is saying, we don't even love your neighbor. And, and, and you're, trying to, you're trying to look at ten things, and all I want you to do is look at two. Love the Lord your God, Lord your God, and you love your neighbor as yourself. That's all I'm asking you to do. And here, look, look, look at Matthew 28, 19. We're going to end with this. Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, Just walk in it. Just 
show up. And he's going to send the people to you. You know, like somebody said to me today, we need to go out to the train station and say, Jesus is coming back soon, you're going to hell. Jesus is coming back soon, you're going to hell. Shut up and sit down, you're going to hell. You're, I don't like your hair, you're going to hell. I don't like your glasses, you're going to hell. I don't like your shirt, you're going to hell. That's exactly what we're doing. Your jeans are ugly, you're going to hell. Those shoes are ugly, you're going to hell. That's what it sounds like. Hip hop, hip hop, hip hop, hip hop. Just like rocking the baby boogie, you want to hell. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. But let me tell you what's powerful. And somebody walks into your building and you say, Morning. <laughs> That's powerful. You know, what, you, you know how disconnected we are? You know how arrogant we are? I'm a Christian. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. There are people who think they're Christians, even in this room. You're not. Just because you say it, you're not. If you go into a garage, you're not a car. It's not that simple. They're a fruit. There's fruit. Let me see. If there is no fruit, then the tree is mislabeled. If they're peaches, take the apple sign down. It's a peach tree. And this passage here says you've got to give back your purpose. You cannot walk in what you feel in this, this emotional world, this soul-driven world. This soul, and we're so depressed, we're so downtrodden, we're so angry. And, and you know why? It's because we see too much. Yeah. And we judge our lives by what we see. This is going bad, and this is, look at this. Look, I didn't get into college, and I show, I didn't get the show, and I didn't get this, and I didn't get that. Where is God? Where is God, Manita? Where is God, my problem star? Where is God? Why would God, why would a good God allow this to happen? And God is like, where are you? That's what he's saying. Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Israel, where are you? New life, where are you today? What can I stand on today? What confidence do I have today in Christ? What confidence? I can say who my best friends are in this church. And I can talk about what we do together. And I can talk about what I call. I love getting my call from Pam Tower. Because I know by the time she hangs up, I'm going to know something I did wrong. And I'm going to know how to do it right. And I'm going to be encouraged. And I'm going to know I got support. And I, I already know because that's our relationship. I already know what Linda calls me. I get who's who I'm visiting with. She's there supporting me, lifting me up, encouraging me. I, we are, that's a relationship. What about God? How do you know you and God are good? How do you know? It's important that you answer that question. How do you know you and God are good? Because you did the sign of the cross, because you saw somebody bless you when they sneeze? Give me some answers. You gotta have that down, because if you don't, that's going to be a horrible reality. A horrible reality. And this church, I want this church to be about people walking in God. Not, not in God because you came to church, no. That does not give you a check. That only gives your soul a wake up. Every time you come here, it's something wakes up in us. And we go back out and we do, and we come back and get like another poo. And we go back out and do and we keep working, and then we keep that going until we are the ones poofing other people. You know, we keep, we encourage one another in the faith. But that's what this is about. Us like sending each other out. Us crawling each other in the way. I'm at the hospital. Can you pray for me? I'm going to, because you pray for me. I got a cousin who's sick in, in Alaska. Would you pray? I'm leaving for Alaska tomorrow. Me and you just been leaving in the morning. We're going to Alaska. And every year, this is like, oh, I'm on year 18. We're going up there, and the people that were there when I first went, they're deacons now. 
their leaders in church. These people didn't go to church. You know, well, I, the first choir I did was about 53 people. And they we went around and said, if you have a church affiliation, say it. I'm from the church of the Tananoma River. <laughs> They told those jokes, and, and about 80% of them didn't go to church because church is a joke. But then, the more they met people in the room, where do you, where do you go to church? Because they became friends. They became friends in the room, and they're like, hey, so this is our last night of choir. We did a big concert. And then they're like, hey, call me tomorrow. Okay. Guess what? She only goes to church with me now. Yep, she's in the choir with me now. We joined the choir. We did the. And you have got to spark something in somebody else's life. That's what we're here for. We're here to spark good news. It's the good news. It's the gospel. I'm not ashamed. Romans says, Romans 1 16, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of salvation. Not me telling people about my church. No, me living the life of Christ. And they want to follow you. Where are you? Some about you. Where are you from? Where are you? What do you do? What are you? That's how it's supposed to be with all of us. And guess who does? Guess who does all the work? God does all the work. You don't even have to do any work. You just have to spend time with Him. He leads you. He opens the door. He does the work. So how do we do? How do we deal with this? How do we deal with this? You know, we get to this point and we say no. Because it's too, it's uncomfortable to do what God called them to do. So they stayed in the land. Where are we? No, it's okay to say we're still wandering in the desert. But the next question: What do we do about it? I want you to leave here today with an answer. How do I change the trajectory of my life? Because I keep doing the same thing, and I end up at the same place. Lord, how do I get out of this same spot? I'm back here again. And then you heal me. I'm delivered. And then I go, 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 go. How do I get back here? That's God. He wants you in another place more than you want it. He wants you there more than you want it. So today, don't, don't go get a book. Don't go get a book off the shelf. Don't go read. You know, that's about his 10 points to get to the new place. No. All right. No. But people love points. People love five steps to be here, 12 steps to get there. But it's one, it's one step. Look up. Look up. Lord, take over. Lord, I give you permission to take over. You know what I pray that today? Lord, take over. Take over. God, I want you to do it. I'm not doing it anymore. You do it. And God, that means, but remember this, when you say take over, that means he's got to shut down some things. He's got to slam some doors. And then, don't get bored. Don't get bored. Just hold on. Because he's about to take you to a new place that you never thought you'd be. I, I, I just said to Vanessa, stay in pie. Where is Vanessa? She in here? And Vanessa, stay in pie. She's the minister on duty today. Stand up. That's the minister on duty. The message stayed behind 10 years ago. As I told you, you're going to be minister on duty at a Baptist church. If I ever, see, it doesn't look, it looks crazy, Vanessa. But you are the minister on duty at a Baptist church in Harlem.
because David says, how long? Lord, I even feel that way sometimes over and over again. How long? <laughs> Guys, Latrice said, I will wait for you, Jesus. Because Lord, without you, where am I going to go? We're going to wait. We're going to wait. You're going to wait. We're going to wait. We're going to wait for you. Like David said. David ended this whole prayer. He says, I still will praise you. He said, I, but I will, I will continue to praise you. I trust you, God. After David said, how long? He says, I still trust you, God. I, I, I trust your unfailing love. I trust you. My heart rejoices in your salvation. That's what he said. Oh, Father, we want to rejoice like David today. Lord, we want to sing like David today. And even though we got to go through hard trials, and sometimes it seems we're alone, God, we will trust you. Give us trust and power today. We need power to trust you. To walk in what you've already done, not in what we see. Give us strength to be bold in the Lord. Walk in his power. I love you, Lord. Somebody came in here today so stressed out. Somebody came in here, Lord, so disappointed in this relationship with you, God. So disappointed in this whole church situation. But Lord, would you just encourage them today? Encourage them today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I, I lift up my knees to ask for prayer. Would you please touch her life? Would you touch her husband? Touch her children? God, I love it when somebody says, tell God have his way in my life. God, have your way in her life today. Lord, anybody who says it today, have your way today. Flip our lives upside down if you have to. God, let us trust you like we've never trusted you before. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say amen. Come on, let's stand together. Let's stand together. Oh, we love you. Father, we love you. I just lift up Pastor Charmaine today. As she begins to prepare the word for next Sunday. Starting over again. Lord, would you lead her? And God, would you touch Minister Lydia on the following Sunday? Lord, as she talks about the blame game, blaming everybody and everything but yourself. God, would you give her a word for this church? God, bring uses in our back with testimony on top of testimony, like you always do. Take us out from this place and use us mightily. Lord, use us to speak to somebody we've never spoken to before. Use us, Lord, to say, how are you doing today? 